as Rutgers goes up against number one Texas. Hi, everybody. This is Bob Rathman. Welcome to our coverage. ESPN will be providing coverage of all four regional finals today as the road to Austin is just about complete. It's my pleasure today to be working with Mimi Griffin. And maybe this Texas team steamrolled to the championship a year ago, but this is a different team that won the championship. It's not the same team. Yes, they're very talented, Bob. Yes, they're playing well, but they lack the poise that their six seniors provided them last season. One of the more underrated players in the country, and perhaps on this Texas team, is Beverly Williams. Everybody talks about the frontline matchups of these two teams, but I think the guard play, the pressure defense, and the perimeter scoring from Beverly Williams and Yolanda Wimish on Texas' team is going to be a key. Rutgers is having a whale of a season. They won 30, lost only two, and maybe perhaps the best team in Rutgers history. Rutgers' first five can play with anybody in the country, but their nemesis has been their lack of depth. They've got to control the tempo today in order that fatigue and foul trouble not become factors. One of the big keys for Rutgers is the play today of Sue Wicks. Sue Wicks is their best. She needs an exceptional game for the Lady Knights for them to win this game. So Sue Wicks will lead the Lady Knights of Rutgers against number one Texas in this, the championship game of the East Regional from Fayetteville, North Carolina. We'll meet the starting lineups in today's NCAA tournament game after this. PAA East Regional Championship. Let's meet the lineup. So the PA announcer, Bob Perone. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Cumberland County Memorial Arena and the championship game of the NCAA Eastern Regional Women Basketball Tournament. Today features the game of the Lady Knights from Rutgers University and the Longhorns from the University of Texas. Now the starting lineups. First for the Lady Knights, at forward, number 10, Kristen Foley. And for the Longhorns, number 32, C.J. Jones. At the other forward position, number 23, for the Knights, Sue Wicks. And for the Longhorns, number 25, Andrea Loy. At the center position, for the Knights, number 14, Regina Howard. And for the Longhorns, number 24, Clarissa Davis. And at the guard position, for the Lady Knights, number 15, Janet Maloof. And for the Longhorns, number 34, Yolanda Wimbish. At the other guard position, for the Knights, number 31, Felicia Austin. And for the Longhorns, number 10, Beverly Williams. The Lady Knights are coached by Teresa Grintz. The Longhorns by Jody Conrad. The Texas Lady Longhorns against the Rutgers Lady Knights. The winner to the Final Four next weekend in Austin, Texas. We'll be back with the opening tip after this. The hottest deals of the spring are at Gateway Oldsmobile right now. Every car in our huge stock is discounted hundreds, even thousands of dollars. Plus, get up to $1,200 extra in factory paid cash rebates or GM financing as low as 3.9% on our most popular models. But there's more. Every new 87 Oldsmobile at Gateway is covered by a free six year or 60,000 mile warranty. Add it all up and you'll see, no one does more to help you buy a new car than Gateway Oldsmobile. Route 22 in Bound Brook. Does consumer debt have you pinned down? Is it like a giant rock pressing the life out of you? Well, enough is enough. American Mortgage ends money nightmares. American Mortgage gives you fast answers on second mortgage loans. End credit problems now. American Mortgage, call 1-800-272-1399. 
Bob, these are Rutgers' keys to winning. The first three will help them prevent Texas from running their transition game. The last will help their starters stay in the game. And for Texas, the keys to winning, re rebounding so they can run their transition. They've got to be intense and prevent turnovers from the guards. And they want to play an up-tempo transition style of basketball. And they're the rules of the game. The difference between the men's and the women's games right now, there's a 30-second clock instead of 45, no 10-second timeline, two instead of three officials, and no three-point field goal. We're ready for basketball from Fayetteville. And the opening tip is won by Rutgers. The Knights in red, Texas in the home white, and right off the bat, Witch misses a bank shot, and Texas has the rebound. June Corto, Patty Broderick, our officials here in this East Region Final. Inside, here's Yolanda Wimbish. Bumps it off the side of the rim, the rebound comes to Jones, and out of Bev Williams, just underway in the East Region Final from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Rutgers is in a 2-3 zone. Jones opens the score, C.J who averages just five a game, puts Texas on the board 2 nothing. The thing about this Texas team and their poise, if they can score early, then they can gain momentum, and that helps them, Bob. If you can prevent them from scoring easily early, you can rattle them. Tenacious man-to-man -man defense by Texas. That's their calling card. Foley works it around to Austin. They look for Wicks, and she's covered inside. So taking the shot is Regina Howard, and the game is tied at two. It's a good sign for Rutgers. Sue Wicks is going to be hounded all night by that Texas defense. For Regina Howard to score early like that is a good sign. C.J. Jones to Williams. They're working around to Wimpin. Back to Jones. Gets a screen from Lloyd and scores. C.J. Jones is on fire. We mentioned earlier that the perimeter scoring by Texas is going to be important because the front line is really going to be packing it in, trying to prevent Clarissa Davis or Andrea Lloyd from getting their hands on it. Full guard pressure by Texas. 4-2, the Lady Longhorns lead. The Lady Knights have dropped only two games this season. They've won 30. They're the Atlantic 10 champions. Wicks firing. Missing. Inside, Howard firing. I don't know, maybe, if it was an omen or not, but watching Sue Wicks warm up today, she had a rough time of it in the pregame practices. Tough to hit anything. And starting off on the cold side. Here's a runner from the middle of the lane by Bev Williams. This is exactly the kind of tempo that Rutgers, not Rutgers, rather, Texas is looking for. They want upbeat because Rutgers is going to tire. They only have five players, five good quality players. They bring two more off the bench, but fatigue is going to be a factor later on in this game. Inside, Howard jammed up and rolls it in. Regina Howard, who is third in the NCAA in field goal percentage at 63%. She's three for three to start things for Rutgers in our third tie of the afternoon. Foul will be called on Rutgers. And this one on Bev Williams. Rutgers is playing very aggress aggressively in this 2-3 zone. Sue Wicks is doing a lot of pushing inside with Clarissa Davis. There is the foul right there. Foley picking up her first foul. And inside, Lloyd misses. The rebound out of bounds to Rutgers. Tied at 6 and 17-41 left to play in the opening half. This is just the third meeting all time between these two teams. Back in the old days of AIAW, Rutgers beat Texas for a national championship. And a blocking foul on C.J. Jones. This is a great sign for Rutgers. Janet Maloof not only handled that pressure, but handled it well. Got right by Wimbish and went in and threw the foul off C.J. Jones. There was some question about Rutgers guards being able to handle this pressure. Right now, there's no sign of any, any trouble. Austin going to get into Sue Wicks. Firing, missing, rebound, Foley, too long. Here's Howard inside, and she has done it all for Rutgers so far. All eight points. And Rutgers takes its first lead of the game at 8-6. Another thing I've noticed is Rutgers is doing an excellent job of getting down on defense to prevent the transition of Texas on a made basket. Teresa's imploring them to just calm down, play their game, run their tempo. Jody Conrad maybe was telling us that if Texas has problems, it's when they get frustrated on offense. And if Rutgers is able to clog the passing lanes, that's going to be a big key this afternoon. Inside Howard, she's on fire! Five for five on all ten Rutgers points. Williams lost the hand, but Texas maintains possession. Wimbish out front to Bev Williams. 
The only Texas defeat was to Tennessee. And they avenged that defeat later in the season. Here's a steal by Sue Wicks. Up the floor it comes to Maloof. Wicks there. And she's fouled. Poise that we were talking about earlier. Rutgers is doing a great job on offense. Look at Regina Howard go up strong. She has really come into her own this year. Is averaging seven more points than she did last year. Rutgers leading 10 to 6. In it goes to Foley. Kristen Foley scores. 12 to 6. Rutgers leads. I'll tell you what's happening is Texas is keying so much on Sue Wick that they are getting it inside easily to their other post players. Rutgers is on an eight-to-nothing run. Loose ball picked up by Howard. Out of bounds. Texas hand. Last touch by Regina Howard. Texas has got to settle down. This is the point we were making earlier about the poise. They can get rattled if it takes them a long time to score early on. Limbish firing. Lloyd puts it up and in. Great move. Good position by Andrea Lloyd, and she goes up strong. She's not afraid to try and draw the foul as well as get the basket. Andrea Lloyd, the only senior on this Texas team. Here's Janet Malou. Now to T. Austin. Same man-to-man -man pressure of the defense that we expect to see from Texas. Austin, the shot clock at eight seconds. In it goes to Sue Wicks. Bob, one thing I'd like to point out now is that Jody Conrad did say that they may go to his own defense if they find they can't stay man-to-man -man with Rutgers. So expect to see maybe a 2-3 if they still have trouble shutting them down offensively. Inside, loose ball, picked up by Wicks. And taken back by Ben Williams. Williams backs it in. So Bev has scored four, and Texas is within four at 14 to 10. If Texas doesn't score, they do not get to exert their full court man-to-man -man pressure, which is one of the things that's going to be a key for them in winning this game. Texas is able to make so much happen in turning defense into offense. And if they can't get the turnovers, that will hurt them. Here's Wicks with a long bang. Foley keeps it alive. Texas is still in their man-to-man -man defense. Inside, long pass, intercepted. C.J. Jones there to pick it off. Fourteen twenty-six left to play in the first half, and Teresa Grunts, Rutgers Lady Knights, on top of Texas by four. We'll be back after this. I told her Suzuki invented quad runners for everybody. She said, who cares? <laughs> hey, look, you want her to come out here? You just tell her that riding a Suzuki quad runner is like skiing, only uphill. It's like windsurfing without the wind. Tell her it's like flying without leaving the ground. I'd tell her it'd be more fun if she stayed home. <laughs> Get right on rebates of up to $185 at your Suzuki dealer now. Why are you letting your cold keep you up? <laughs> Stuffing it out alone, <coughs> shivering and shaking, coughing your night sweats, competing with a nose that runs like a champion, wishing you could breathe as well with your mouth closed as with it open, wondering what it was you did to deserve to be this sick. Why? When there's NyQuil, the nighttime sniffling, sneezing, coughing, aching, stuffy head, fever, so you can rest medicine. From Vicks, of course. An exciting night of pressure basketball in store for you on ESPN tonight. Live coverage of the NCAA women's basketball continues at 6 p.m. Eastern time, 3 p.m. Pacific. It's Tennessee against Auburn from Knoxville. In the Midwest final, Iowa against Louisiana Tech from Monroe, Louisiana. And the West final tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern time, 7 p.m. Pacific, Ohio State against Long Beach State. Here in Fayetteville, Texas, the number one team in the country the number one seed in this regional and the defending champion trailing four but slicing that lead down is Yolanda Wimbish. Again, here are perimeter players, the guards for Texas scoring for them. There's a foul in the backcourt on Wimbish. It's her first. Maybe both teams continue to shoot the ball very well. 
Rutgers is 7 of 13 for 54%, and Texas trailing two, they're shooting 67% on 6 out of 9. When the teams are able to get the shots off, their shot selection is very good. The, the thing for both teams is they're playing such aggressive, good defense right now that they're not getting that many shots. Wicks hounded by Andrea Lord. Open on the wing is Malou. Wicks the offensive rebound and scores. She is so smooth inside. She just grabbed that rebound and spin, spun around Andrea Lloyd for a clear layup. Lloyd over to Jones. CJ is open. The rebound to Howard. Regina averages just under 10 rebounds per game. That's her third today. Long pass and a foul on Williams. That Williams picking up her second foul. We talked about rebounding being a key for Rutgers because it'll stop the Texas transition game. Here's inside position by Sue Wicks, a two-step move right around Andrea Lloyd and into the basket. It looked like on the replay maybe that Andrea guessed wrong. She thought the rebound was going to go to the left side, scooted around to get position, and that left the Wicks open to get the rebound on the right side. Here's Howard, missing, and a foul on Davis. Texas perhaps try to go into their 2-3 zone. The, the, per, uh, the post players, rather, for Rutgers are getting the ball inside way too easily. They have got to prevent them from getting the ball and then prevent them from going to the basket that easily. Here's a note, baby. In the Thursday night game against James Madison, Texas was whistled for only eight fouls. They picked up five in the first seven minutes here today. And you have to credit Rutgers for that. They're going right at them. That Texas mystique doesn't mean a thing to these ladies. Gina Howard off to a 5 for 5 start from the floor and adds a free throw. Her 11th point. Rutgers lead 17 to 12. The Lady Knights have lost only two games to Penn State and to Old Dominion. Davis there to get the rebound. And I believe maybe that's the first time we've called her name today, Clarissa Davis. She has been strangely quiet. She averages 18 and a half a game for Texas. What they're doing inside with that 2-3 is Kristen Foley is inside. She's going out to the corner. They're preventing the post players from getting the ball. Wimbish rolls it in. Even though Foley plays inside on that 2-3 in the back line, she'll be the one to run out to the corner so that the post players are never clear for a pass. Rutgers leading 17 to 14. 12-40 left to play in the half. Foley firing. Clarissa Davis there to get her fourth rebound. Here's a steal. T. Austin puts it in. Texas might need a timeout here. We're, we're talking about the poise, the same factor I told you about earlier. They have got to settle down and play their game. They are not into their tempo yet. They're allowing Rutgers to force the action. Here's a drive by Wimble. Yolanda with six. 19-16. Rutgers by three. 12-minute mark in the first half. With Rutgers leading in this game and Texas trying to play itself into the final four and its home four next weekend, the thought has to be going through the mind of the fans in Austin. Oh, no, not again. We'll explain why. Holy score. Two years ago, Texas had a chance to get back to Austin. They lost to Western Kentucky in the regional semifinals. That was a last-second shot heard around the country in women's basketball when Western Kentucky beat them on the last-second shot. It was incredible. Limbish missing. Lloyd crashing the boards, and she's on the back and picks up the foul. Rutgers continues a top shooting. They've hit five of their last six. Sue Wicks is doing a great job. She might be a little bit silent right now offensively, but she's doing a great job on the, on the rebounding and positioning. And this is what's paying off for this Rutgers team. They're allowed, they're able to control the tempo because they control the rebounds. Only one foul against Rutgers here in the opening minutes. Malou to Wicks. Feeding it inside to Howard. She has it missed today and keeps the string intact. She was leading the nation in field goal percentage at one time during the season. You can tell why from the display she's giving us this afternoon. Clarissa Davis, her first shot of the day. She had 26 in the semifinal win over James Madison two nights ago. She averages 19 per game. 23-18, Rutgers. Foley lobs inside the steal. Andrea Lloyd gets it out to Bev Williams. 
Texas pushing up the four, three on three. Williams. And again, it's the perimeter scoring for Texas. It's the perimeter players mm -hmm. doing the scoring. That was Beverly Williams, number 10. He's at all three of her shots. 23-20. Rutgers. Sue Wicks, guarded by Lloyd. Here's Foley. Maloo finds T. Austin. On the cut. Wicks off the baseline. Puts it in. A she, tough shot, maybe. She is one of the best, if not the best, in that turnaround soft jumper. She has been shooting that all season and has been highly successful. Deb Williams throws it away. Here is Wicks, and all the momentum going out of bounds. First, she makes the great cut down to the baseline. Gets, receives the ball, and in the same motion, turns in the air and shoots that jump shot before the defense has a chance to set themselves. Definite mark of the first half. 25-20. Rutgers on top. Rutgers is doing a great job of spreading their offense out so that the defense of Texas is having a hard time helping one, one another out. They keep their post players out of the key until they're ready to make the cut to the basket. A turnover there for the Lakers. And a timeout on the floor. Nine minutes, 43 seconds left in the half. It's Rutgers by five. For almost two years now, my daddy and I have been doing our best to become first in Chevrolet sales and service. Well, now it's official. All-American Chevrolet is the only gold medal dealership in all of New Jersey. And that's something to be proud of because it recognizes the quality of sales and service that we at All-American have always tried to bring to you, our customers. You can buy a car or have a car serviced anywhere. But before you do, remember the gold medal and what it stands for. Then go for the gold. Go All-American. The lots declare you to be guilty. I am innocent! Ben Kingsley as Silas Marner condemned by greed, transformed by love. Will one of you take charge of the child for No, me? no. I can't part with her. I can't let her go. She's come to me. I have a right to keep her. Silas Marner, a special two-hour presentation on Masterpiece Theater. TKR Cable, Channel 8. 1,000. The strengths of this Texas team is the athletic ability they possess in every position. Here's Yolanda Wimish, number 34, doing a great drive on the baseline, double pump fake around Sue Wicks and over Regina Howard. Jody Conrad is notably concerned at this point, five points down. As well she should be. Both teams red hot. Rutgers, in fact has hit seven of its last eight field goals. Look at that stat, the rebound. That is why Rutgers is able to be ahead by five points. It's one of the keys that we mentioned earlier in this game. If Rutgers is going to win, they've got to control the boards. Dave uh, Jones, missing. Rebound, Maloof. Rutgers leading by five at 25-20. And 9-20 left to go in the first half. The first of four regional finals here on ESPN today. And C.J. Jones picks up her second foul. Texas is not doing a great job moving their feet on defense. One of the things that really propelled them through the game against James Madison was they were so intense defensively for 40 minutes. Today they seem a little bit a half step slow on their defense. They're not moving to protect that baseline. Coming into the ball game for Texas is Lisa McBride, the 5'7 freshman. And out of the game goes C.J. Jones with the two fouls. Take a seat right next to head coach Jody Conrad. Kristen Foley, the redshirt senior from Peabody, Massachusetts, missing the front end. Here's Wimbish. Back out to McBride. Rutgers in that 2-3 zone once again with Kristen Foley roaming and going out to the corner when necessary. Wilson, and a foul, and it's an offensive foul on Clarissa Davis. Bob poised. That's the poise. It's the frustration that they have when they can't get their basket easily early on. They're trying to force. You don't normally see Clarissa Davis do something like this. It wasn't there. They need to pass the ball to, to create openings in that 2-3 zone. Maybe even though there's 8.50 left to go in the first half, the fouls are starting to mount up for Texas. Williams, Davis, Jones, all with two. 
another difference between this year and last year's team is that they don't have the depth in every position that they had last year. They cannot afford the foul trouble. Wicks inside over Davis. Whistle, foul, and it's on. Texas and Andrea Lowell. Her second. But this is a completely different team than we saw play James Madison the other night. Here's the position once again. Andy Lloyd gets caught out of position. Sue Wicks fights after that rebound and continues to fight after it. Sue Wicks is 76 percent free throw shooter. Her seventh point of the game. It seemed to me in the game here Thursday that Texas played an almost perfect basketball game. It and really no, was. They were having fun. They were executing. It was almost flawless. How often can you do that back to back? That's a good point. 27 20 Rutgers. Biggest lead of the game for the Lady Knights. Rutgers in the 2 3 zone once again. Wimbish rolls it in. Now, one of the things Rutgers is going to have to stop is that drive from the baseline by the perimeter players. They can't just let them score like that. Regina Howard did not protect the baseline well. 27-22. Rutgers leading. Wicks. Here's Austin. Fade away for Foley. Howard keeps it alive. What a job. Missed the shot. Here's Wicks for the offensive stick back. Texas is being caught too far underneath the basket. There were three white jerseys underneath, but they're too far. As a result, Sue Wicks and Regina Howard are able to come over them. They have the athletic ability to jump over them to rebound. 29-22, Rutgers trying to spring the upset. Win the East and go to Austin next weekend. Lord, out of the corner, McBride. Nothing but net for the freshman. Boy, that's a tough shot for a freshman to come in and hit her first shot like that. Texas back in their man-to-man. -man. Whistle. And a technical foul has been called against Jody Conrad of Texas. All right, Bob, I'll tell you one thing. At this level, when you're in, when you're this far along in the tournament, no technical is by chance. Jody Conrad is working the officials. She is not, she does not feel that the officials are calling the game as she would like to see it called, and as a result, she's going to let them know about it. Patty Broderick, the official that whistled the technical foul, and Sue Wicks will shoot. So Wicks hits the free throw. Her 11th point. One shot technical, we should point out, in the women's game. On the bench. 30 to 24. Watchers leading. 7.20 left to play here in the first half. I am so impressed with the poise of this Rutgers team. As we mentioned earlier, there's no hesitation. They're taking it right to Texas. There's no Texas mystique that's bothering them. Wicks. Sue has scored 13. Her running mate, Regina Howard, affectionately known as Sticks, has scored 13 herself, and it's 32-24. An eight-point lead, the biggest for Rutgers today. They are completely shutting down the inside game of Texas. Wicks gets the rebound. That's her fourth board. 6.45 to play in the half. Smart move by Teresa Grimms with that 2-3 zone. When we get a chance later in the game, I'll really explain how it is they're shutting those post players down. Williams tries to lead the Texas running game and a blocking foul on T. Austin. Okay, now Bob, maybe what Jody Conrad just did is working. I don't know that you could call that against one player or the other. They were both going after the ball. And that was Patty Broderick, the official that Jody was yelling at, who called the technical foul. Coming into the game for Texas, 6'8 freshman Ellen Bear. And Lisa McBride goes out of the game. 32-24, Rutgers. All right, here's the 2-3 zone. Now watch Kristen Foley in the back, number 10. She is running the post player down low. And if necessary, will run out to the corner to protect that baseline shot. But she's doubling with the other player on the 2-3 to prevent the post player from getting the ball. Davis misses, wicks the rebound. Larissa Davis has scored for two for Texas. The team's leading score, but comes back and gets the steal. Now that's what they have to do. They can't let the post people get their hands on the ball. Good defense by Clarissa Davis. Andrea Lloyd to Bev Williams. 
And he feeds it inside. Here's Bear. Take it away. Traveling call. I think what Jody Conrad's trying to do with sending 6'8 Ellen Bayer in is they cannot keep her from shooting. She's too tall. She's going to try to shoot right over this zone. A big key, maybe as you pointed out earlier, was the offensive rebound. And Rutgers has taken advantage. They not, not only are getting the rebounds, but they're converting on the rebounds, which is very important. Wicks had it knocked away by Lloyd, held home, possession, Texas. Five thirty-seven to play in the half. And Teresa Grants, who worked this club awfully hard yesterday in preparation for this game, two two-hour practices in preparation, and everything's paying off right now. Williams. Wimbush penetrated. Quick step inside. Howard the rebound. They have got to get someone on the offensive board. They've got to position themselves in box out. Austin with the drive. Gets her own rebound. Back up. Yes. Delisha Austin, a sophomore. New Jersey and Rutgers incredibly has taken a 10-point lead over number one Texas. Jody Conrad's calling a timeout, a much-needed timeout. It's an official's timeout right here. 430 left to go in the half, and it's 34 to 24. Rutgers. <laughs> My next guest is an incredible guy, a rock singer, a surgeon. And one heck of a tuba player. And now he has a great tasting wine cooler. Please welcome Dewey Stevens! He's not here? The unexpected taste of Dewey Stevens. One third less calories, two thirds more fun. Dewey, come on now, you're ruining my show. Domino's Pizza delivers quality. <laughs> It takes fresh baked quality to avoid the noid. We keep the noid out and all the quality in. So avoid the noid. Call Domino's Pizza now for hot quality pizza. Domino's Pizza delivers. Watch number 10, Kristen Foley. This is why Rutgers is controlling the board. She's playing tough defense on the wing of that 2-3 zone right now. The shot goes up. She finds a player. Ellen Bayer, 6-8, boxes her out. Look at the way she keeps her off the board, allowing Regina Howard to go for the rebound. Even though we were at a point in the first half where an official's timeout would have come, Jody Conrad took the timeout. So she has used two here in the first half. Look at the difference in front court scoring. Rutgers is doing an excellent job shutting down the Texas front court. A near steal, and Rutgers gets the ball. It was last touched by Texas. Everything is going the Scarlet Knights way. 34-24, Rutgers leading at 420 left in the half. And Texas still in the man-to-man -man pressure defense. Power. Number 22 into the ball game is Bill Schultz for Rutgers. Here's Texas coming up with the basketball. That's one of the things that Ellen Bear can do very well is reject the shot. Wimbish. Put it in. Yolanda Wimbish knows that she has got to take on the scoring responsibility right now. She realizes what's happening with Clarissa and Andrea Lloyd inside. The south ball from Victoria Texas. Yolanda Wimbish has scored 10. Wicks just throws it up at the basket. Davis the rebound. Andy Lloyd. Held ball, possession arrow, favoring Rutgers. That's the first time we really saw Texas run their transition game. Here's Andrew 
Taylor Lloyd going up for the layup. She stays in for her own rebound, but look how many red jerseys there are. Rutgers is doing an excellent job on the, on the board. These two teams have really gone at it here this afternoon. If it's possible, they've turned up the intensity not one more level here in the last three minutes of the half. Howard, whistle, three-second violation against Rutgers. Wicks was caught in the lane, and Texas takes over. Thirty-four, twenty-six. Watcher leading Texas. Texas is really tentative on their passing offensively. They're not fluid. Williams misses, and a foul was called. This one on Watchers. And I believe it's going to be on first and fold. They're really hesitating on their pass. Rather than being fluid and reversing the ball against the zone like that, they're hesitating. They look and then they pass. They give the defense time to adjust. The foul is on your ship. Her first and Doug Williams to the free throw line. A 73% shooter missing. They've had 27 against Arkansas in the Southwest Conference Tournament Championship game. 17 Thursday in the win over JMU. Goes 0 for 2 at the line. 34-26, Watchers. Wicks is open. Rebound ball four, and it is Ben Williams coming out of there with it. Loose ball. Texas has it. Here's David Wicks diving for it. Rutgers back in that 2-3 zone. There goes Kristen Foley, number 10, out to front Clarissa Davis. Inside, bad pass. Wicks picks it off. Loose ball. Howard's got it. Quick pass inside to Wicks. Blocked from behind by Bear. Wicks has got it. Now it's Howard. Davis the rebound. Fierce action inside. Wow, this is great basketball. This is great. Two-minute mark of the first half. There is no quarter given by either team here. Lob inside, Bear, Foley knocked it away. Good hands by Kristen Foley. If, if Ellen Bear gets her hands on that ball and keeps the ball above everyone's head, she should be able to get layups inside. Look at Ellen Bear coming from behind. That's the advantage of being 6'8". From nowhere, she blocks Sue Wicks. But again, Rutgers is doing a great job aggressively on the boards, both offensively and defensively. Andrea Lloyd plays to Yolanda Wimpins. Into the ball game is Penny Hall for Texas number 14. Davis scores. Only a matter of time before she gets it going. Clarissa with her second basket. 34-28. One of the things Texas is able to do once they score is to put on full court pressure. Foley getting it inside. Ricks had it knocked away by Bear. Picked up by Yolanda Wimbus. Foley is back. Wimbus. And a foul is called on Wicks. Teresa Grants is calling a timeout. Smart move by Teresa. She realizes that the momentum is shifting a little bit. She does not want to get this, let this get out of hand and go back to Texas' side. Good move by Alana Wimbish. Realize she has an advantage there. Goes up. Sue Wicks fouls her. 34 to 28. Rutgers continues to lead. The big four in this game. For Rutgers, Sue Wicks and Regina Howard. And they have done exactly what was expected of them, but the numbers are certainly down for Davis and Lord in Texas. One thing I want to mention about Howard and Wicks being able to be successful offensively is their guards, Janet Maloof and T. Austin, are doing an excellent job handling the pressure. They're able to get them the ball inside, and as a result, they can score. Regina and, and Sue Wicks are also doing an excellent job on the offensive boards, and that's where a lot of the re or a lot of the points rather second shot. If this is any indication of the type of basketball we'll see today on ESPN, it's going to be a whale of a day. We've got all four region finals for you at the NCAA Women's Championships. Coming up later today, it's Auburn against Tennessee, Long Beach to take on Ohio State, and Iowa going up against Louisiana Tech. Well, the folks from Austin with some long faces here in Fayetteville. Bob, we're in the first half, all right? Rutgers has not substituted maybe once or twice. This is an intense, fierce pace to keep up for two halves of basketball. 
Texas does have more substitutes, more depth in their bench to go to. Let's see later on in the game if Rutgers does in fact get tired. They're certainly not in foul trouble. They're doing an excellent job that way. A minute 16 left, and there's Penny Hall who checked in a moment ago for Texas. A minute 16 left in the half, and coming along at halftime, our colleague Alan Massagale will be along at ESPN Sports Center. He'll be updating on what's going on in the world of sports and the men's and women's basketball tournaments. And then Mimi and I will be back with statistics and highlights here from Fayetteville. Yolanda Wendell to the free throw line, 65% this year. And hits it. Her 11th point. Wimbush is at 5 of 10 from the field. And now 2 of 2 at the foul line for her 12 points. She's really picked up the scoring slack left by Fran Harris, one last year's senior. It's a four-point game. Rutgers leading. The biggest lead was 10. Steele. And a foul on Penny Hall for a push. She just about picked that one off from T. Austin. You know, that was funny, Bob, because I do think that Penny Hall fouled, but she, she fouled long before the ref ever called it. She fouled there, not, not here when she was going after the ball. She already was past T. Austin when the foul was called. Penny Hall picks up her first, and Felicia Austin is a free throw line. He is 68% at the line. And her fifth point today. She has really improved her free throw shooting over the last year, 46%. And you see this season at 68%. And can't get better than that, two for two. 36-30, Rutgers. Here's Lloyd. Bob inside the bear. Too far underneath, so gets it across to Lloyd. Linden. Flips the board. Rutgers continues to dominate the backboards. Now they've got a three on three. Here's Austin. Rutgers is not only dominating the backboards, they're pushing the ball for themselves, putting a lot of pressure on the Texas to get down and play transition defense. Mike has been cold. They've been only one of their last nine shots. Foley tries to end that. Nope, can't do it. Rebound, loose. Bears got it for Texas. 24 seconds to go in the half. 36-30, oh, 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 Rutgers leading. The shot clock is off. Hall, loose ball, picked up by Rutgers with seven seconds. They now recognize how much time is left. Austin fires, misses. Howard, this will count if it goes, and she just misses. Head coach Jody Conrad of Texas. And her ball club fell behind in the early moments, and I think that was a key meeting. Regina Howard is able to hit those shots, and it just appeared that Rutgers got a world of confidence. Well, that's exactly what happened in Texas in the James Madison. They were able to score just as easily as Rutgers did tonight, or this afternoon, rather, and that's why they got on a roll. That's what this team needs. Now, let's watch the second half and see how easily they're able to score in the beginning. That will tell what will happen the rest of the half. Texas ball to start the second half, and Andy Lloyd gets it in to Yolanda Wimbush, and here we go. 20 minutes remaining with the victor to the final four in Austin. And Davis inside puts it in. Good sign for Texas. Very good sign that they were able to get it into the hands of Marissa Davis and she was able to score on their first possession. 36-32 Rutgers. Texas still under pressure man to man defense. Kristen Foley on the baseline. Puts it in. So an answering salvo from Rutgers. Wimbish to Williams. Here's C.J. Jones. Had a nose it. Andrea Lloyd inside. Too strong. Offensive stick back. Put it in. And a foul on Rutgers. Great second effort by Andy Lloyd. One of the good things about that 2-3 zone is it puts them in natural rebounding position. But Andy Lloyd was able to get in there between the two back players, get her own rebound, and put it right back up, draw the foul as well. Janet Maloof with the personal, her first, and Andrea Lloyd will step up to the free throw line. I think one of the things that Texas has to keep in mind is just 
keep in their game plan. Try to control the tempo. The main thing is to be able to control the boards, to be able to run their transition game. They've got 20 minutes to go. There's really no problem if they just get back into their game plan. They have come from behind before in this season. Texas, maybe today, is now two of five at the free throw line. Archer's leading it 38 to 34. Austin inside to Howard. What a pass. Great backdoor cut. She was able to, to lose Andrea Lloyd, and no one helped her weak side defense. Rutgers leading by six. Rutgers continues to pack that zone into the paint. Here's Jones on the baseline. Lloyd wiggled inside for the offensive rebound and whips with the block. Good job by Andrea Lloyd, number 25, to get on the offensive board. A runner by Jones. CJ with six. And Texas again with it four. Austin wiggles out of that trap. And now it is Janet Maloof. There's been a change in defensive assignments. Clarissa Davis is the safety on two wicks now. And Regina Howard's being guarded by Andy Lloyd. At the other end, Davis scores on a foul on Rutgers. And some emotion from Clarissa Davis. Maybe this will get her fired up and more into the game offensively. The foul goes against Regina Howard. It is her first. And a three-point play opportunity for Clarissa Davis. This Davis, excuse me. I'm sorry, this is a good sign for Texas as well because they've been able to score just about every possession down the floor. And because they can do that, they're going to get more comfortable with their game plan. But the free throw shooting now is a team two of six. They've never really been good from the line, Bob. Just 65% as a team coming into this game. 42 to 38. Rutgers leading. Austin is open. Rebound to Lloyd. Williams. Jones kept alive, but Witch pulls down the rebound. And Austin leads a two on two. And Austin. Trying to take Rutgers to Austin. Scores again. Great move by T. Austin. She is deceptively quick on that break and came down. Hesitated a little bit to let Davis run by her and then put the bank shot up. 17 20 left in the game. And the Lady Knights lead it by six. Wimbish. No rebound to Fulton. Rutgers. Knocking off two ACC teams to advance to this game, beating Duke and NC State, 30 and two, and bidding for their first ever regional championship. Travel, nope, three second violin. Good helping defense by Texas. This is something that they were not able to do in the first half, but they picked up on now in the second half. They're starting to help one another out, and it's paying off with turnovers. 44-38. Rutgers leading. Here's Williams. Look at inside. Back it goes to Jones. Jones gets around Lloyd. Missing. Rebound Davis. Clarissa Davis with only four first half points, but six here in the second half. And you know what the difference is, Bob? They're getting the offensive and the defensive rebounds right now, and that's what's allowing them to chip away at this lead. Bowling. Gets her own rebound. Double team. Fires anyway. Austin. Yes. Rutgers has everyone on the board. Even their guards are rebounding for them tonight. Here's Jones to Wimbush. Around to Williams. Inside, Davis. Puts it in. I have a feeling we're going to hear him hearing a lot from her in this second half. Clarissa had 26 against James Madison here Thursday, 24, in the first round, went over St. Joe's. And you'll remember back to last year, she was the MVP of the Final Four in Austin as a freshman. Austin, a rainbow, it's good, and a foul on Williams. I can't say enough about 
Southeast Rutgers perimeter players. Maloof, number 15, and 31, T. Austin. They're doing an excellent job not only handling the pressure, but also scoring when their post players get shut down. T. Austin doesn't even think twice about putting that shot up. And draws the foul. Michelle Lunder has come in for Rutgers. The redshirt sophomore. Delisha Austin is at the line. 12 today and two for two at the foul line. Make it three out of three and a Baker's dozen. Rutgers leads 49-42. Williams, a turnover. Austin works it up to Maloof. Off the hands of Austin out of bounds to Texas. Sue Wicks had a breather. Now she's back in the game. That wasn't even a breather, Bob. I think what they did is take her out just to diagram a play, and they threw her right back in. They can't afford to have her sitting on the bench. Patty Nagel is in for Texas number 21. And C.J. Jones goes out. Paul Letman. Here's McBride, also checking back into the game. Hit a shot in the first half, misses here in the second half. And a foul is called on Rutgers, and it's on Kristen Paul. Clarissa Davis has come alive on the, on the board, on re offensive boards and defense boards. 49 to 42, Rutgers leading and a timeout on the floor. 14 47 remaining, it's the Knights by seven. Fuss with shampoo and conditioner? Who needs it? Tote two bottles into the shower to wash my hair. Not me. I want to wash my hair and go. And now I can. With something new. Now you're thinking, Pert? That's not new. But it is. Now it's Pert plus. Complete shampoo plus complete conditioner in one bottle. There's never been anything quite like it. Pert plus leaves my hair clean, conditioned, and looking terrific. Before, to get results this good, I used shampoo and conditioner. No more. Now, with Pert Plus, I just wash and go. New Pert Plus. Shampoo plus complete conditioner in one. Let you just wash and go. What took you so long? <laughs> when your throat's awfully sore, Chloroseptic Spray relieves it awfully fast. How fast? So fast. When he starts to feel relief, we'll end this commercial. does do a very effective job freeing their post players. On this play, Regina Howard passes it back out to the wing and cuts through. Look at Annie Lloyd has to go on top of the defense. She's screened by Kristen Foley, which leaves Regina Howard open for a layup. They do a great job of freeing their key players. Regina Howard, number 14, and Sue Wicks, number 23. A seven-point lead for Rutgers. Nagel, and a whistle stops play inside. And a foul is called against the Lady Knights. And this one goes against Michelle Lunder, number 22. Here's Teresa Grant in her 11th season at Rutgers. And she knows a thing or two about winning championships, playing at Dame Demaculata under Kathy Ross. Lloyd missing. And Rutgers is running. Maloof up to T. Austin. Puts it in. T. Austin is so quick on that break, she came out of nowhere to fill the lane for Janet Maloof. 51 42 Rutgers. McBride. Rebound to Wicks. Texas has been out rebounded only three times this year. One was in the Tennessee loss, and they're being out rebounded today 31 to 18. Inside Austin. Here's Wicks control. So Wicks in and out. Rebound, Texas, and Andrea Lloyd. On that rebounding point you were making, Bob, Clarissa Davis was imploring her perimeter people to help her. She can keep the ball alive along with Andy Lloyd inside, but they need the perimeter player to pick up the garbage once they hit it out. Second foul on Regina Howard. Kristen Foley right back into the Rutgers lineup, and T. Austin goes out. 13-47 remaining in the game. 51-42. There's the team foul situation, just the opposite of the first half. Very different story from what we saw in the first half. Oh, 
Texas saves it. That was Maloof crashing into the table. And a score for Andrea Lloyd. Heads up play by Andy Lloyd. Maloof was on the scorer's table, so she knew there was a clearing at the top of the key, and she took it right through the two front line people in the back. Here's a replay of that drive. She knew she had an opening, took it right in, went up strong and threw the foul. Sue Wicks with her second personal, and Andy Lloyd trying to finish off a three-point play. Missed it. The rebound fought for. Davis picks it up and puts it in. This could give them the spark that they need to really chip away at this lead and come back even with this Rutgers team. A four-point possession for Texans, and they slice the Rutgers lead to five. Foley can't handle that pass. It's loose, held ball, possession favors Texans. They're coming alive. They're starting to move their feet. They're playing heads-up basketball now. Something we didn't really see in the first half. T. Austin coming right back in for Rutgers, and Michelle Lunder going to the Rutgers back. 13.08 to play in this East Region Championship game. Bob, one thing I just noticed, T. Austin looks a little tired to me. Coming back into the game, she was was not exactly energetic. The possession arrow was incorrect. The possession is Rutgers. And so they're asking everybody to come down to the other end. And Rutgers will have it. They forgot to flip the arrow after the, at the start of the half. It was Texas ball to start the second half. They didn't flip the possession arrow. 51-46. Rutgers leading, and Sue Wicks missing. Drawing a foul on Clarissa Davis, and that's her third. Obviously, they're not going to be able to afford to lose Clarissa Davis. They have got to have her in the game, especially since she's come alive on the board. With no uh, disrespect to Lloyd and Williams and the rest of the players, Clarissa Davis may be the key player in a Texas comeback, if it is to happen. She already has been key in terms of just keeping them where they are right now because she's the one who's really come alive on the rebounds. And I know I keep saying that, but it's going to be so vital to them if they want to win this basketball game to control the board. They can't run if they don't. They, ca they can't prevent Rutgers from scoring if they don't. They have to control the board. Sue Wicks is a perfect five for five of the line, and she's also added 11 rebounds today. That story at the foul line may be very telling by the end of this game with Texas not taking advantage of the opportunities to score there. Yolanda Wimbish. Here's McBride. Out of the corner, Nagel misses. Davis keeps it alive, lost it, and Rutgers takes over. Last year, maybe Rutgers made it to the region championship before losing to Western Kentucky. Here's Austin on a runner and hits it. And I'm wondering if the experience of getting to that game last year is paying off dividends today. There is no question that they are benefiting from the experience that they had last year against Western Kentucky. They were just happy to make that game last year. This year, their goal is to win this and get to the final four. Rutgers with a nine-point lead. Their biggest has been 10. Here's Lloyd. And a foul on Rutgers. Heads up play by the freshman McBride to draw the defense to her and be able to dump it off to Andy Lloyd underneath. Andy Lloyd saw, Cla saw Clarissa Davis on the opposite side of the key open once she drew Regina Howard, but drew the foul from Regina before the pass was made. Howard now with three. Bev Williams back in for Texas. <laughs> and Andy Lloyd stepping up to the line. Southwest Conference Player of the Year. Our colleague on ESPN, Dick Vitale, had her tab in the preseason as the number one player in America. Seven points for Lloyd. And there's the Texas bench, and there's his definite look of concern. As well it should be with a 55-47 score right now. Lloyd puts them both in. Eight points for Andy, and it's 55-48. Here's Austin, working against Williams. Tipped away in a steal by Lord. Controls the dribble, takes it up, and scores! And a blocking foul. Great move. Tremendous. Crossed over dribble at the top of the key, realized she needed to go up at, on the left side of the basket. Crossed over here in front of Janet Maloof. You'll see here. Gets Janet Maloof backpedaling, takes it up with her right hand, lays it in, and draws the foul. They need this kind of spark. Rutgers.
Rangers takes a timeout. 11.59 to play in the game. And the Lady Knight lead is down to five. Fire in its life-giving warmth. The family of man evolved. Survival depended upon the keeper of the flame and his untiring vigilance. Modern man relies upon electric power, just as our ancestors relied upon fire. And round-the-clock vigilance by Jersey Central Dispatchers ensures that today's energy is there for your family's comfort and safety. Sure, worker in. Make an appointment. I call Detroit. They'll do it. For every car need, here's where you do better. You do better at a Chevy go-getter. Where New Jersey gets the better buy. With the cars and care that'll wake you there. You do better at a Chevy go-getter. Jim, we figured it out. You'll love the price. You do better at a Chevy go-getter. That's graduate assistant coach Candy Etheridge of Texas. She was on that championship team of a year ago and one of the premier point guards in the history of the women's game. Won the Wade Trophy as the National Player of the Year last year, Bob, and is able to lend her expertise this year to the backcourt team, or players rather, of Texas. Andy Lloyd, concentrating, pumps it in. Her 11th point. She's now hit three in a row after missing her first two free throws. 55-51 Rutgers with 11.55 to play. Wicks. 19 for Sue Wicks. Sue Wicks was a little miss about being left off the Naismith team this year, and I think she's showing her critics or those who left her off why she should be on this afternoon. Deb Williams from the outside. Texas trailing by four. Near steal by Wimbish. Foley controls inside. Wicks. Fall away. Lloyd the rebound. Williams penetrating, banking, hitting. Bob, I got to point something out right now. Rutgers is not attacking the board the way they did in the first half. I think they're tired. It really takes a lot of effort to box out and go after those rebounds, and they haven't done that the last few possessions. A Rutgers 10-point lead is down to two. 57, 55, Wicks inside. And a blocking foul on Texas. And Bev Williams picks up number four. Sue Wicks maybe is doing yeoman's work. One of the things that Rutgers is doing is moving the ball well, but there Key Austin almost gets in Sue's way and probably prevented her from making that shot, but at least she drew the foul. Williams with four, Clarissa Davis with three. The Texas foul problems continue to mount as Sue Wicks misses the free throw, and she knew at the moment it left her hand. She tried to put a little body English on that the way she was backpedaling. Looking for point number 20, the best player in Rutgers history misses them both, and Texas has a chance to tie. This is the closest they've been since eight to six. That's a sign of fatigue. Sue Wicks doesn't miss her foul shot, Bob. It's a sign of fatigue. She's short on them. Here's Williams, a runner. Missed it. Tip, no. Davis keeps it alive. Rebound, Rutgers. And Malou has it. 10-25 left. This Texas crowd is really coming alive, trying to energize their team. Wicks is bottled up and fouled by Andy Lloyd. And it's her third. It's the right idea by Lloyd, though. She came over because she realized Clarissa was going to be beat on the baseline by Sue Wicks. She came around weak side to try to help out to prevent that easy layup. Jody Conrad's Texas Lady Longhorns have trailed throughout. Rutgers with the ball. And it is Kristen Foley. Inside, Wicks again just missed it. And Lloyd saves it over to McBride. Another chance for Texas to tie. McBride, that's going to be an offensive foul, yes. As soon as McBride dished it off, it was Maloof there. 
to take one, the punishment. One of the important things on a fast break is you've got to stop at the top of the key. She had her lanes filled. There's no reason to go inside that key area. That's when you run into trouble and you draw the offensive foul. McBride first gives Rutgers the ball and crush it by Texas. Ten minutes to go in the East Region Championship game here on ESPN. 57-55. Rutgers leading it by two. Bowler missing. Battles. Quick saves out to Austin. Howard, who's been silent here this half, penetrates. No basket. A foul before the shot. That's Clarissa Davis's fourth foul. Here's Howard working hard once again offensively to get that ball. Drives right around Carissa Davis and draws the foul. A diamond on the floor, 9.30 remaining. Rutgers continues to lead Texas 57 to 55. And we'll return to the East Region final in Fayetteville, North Carolina, right after this. I love a passion fruit, so I put it in a soup. Not so good. Then I tried a passion fruit pizza. No way. And my idea of a passion fruit meal, too messy. But the Dewey Stevens, he put the passion fruit in a wine cooler. Tastes great. Why didn't I think of that? The unexpected taste of Dewey Stevens. One third less calories, two thirds more fun. That's a Dewey. What a guy. It's for Domino's Pizza delivers quality. <laughs> it takes fresh baked quality to avoid the noid. We keep the noid out and all the quality in. So avoid the noid. Call Domino's Pizza now for hot quality pizza. Domino's Pizza delivers. ESPN's live coverage of college baseball continues Monday night, March the 23rd at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, when Maine faces Miami. Two national powers throw off right here on ESPN. A big key down the stretch for Texas, Marissa Davis, saddled with four fouls and on the bench. Rutgers ball, the Lady Knights lead it by two. They pound it inside. Howard, and she is fouled by McBride. The Texas team is not helping one another out very well. Rutgers is doing a very good job of screening and picking for one another to free them and drawing the fouls from Texas. Teresa Grinch stealing a look at that scoreboard clock. It shows 926 remaining, and for Teresa, it must seem like a lifetime left on that clock. No question about it. As we mentioned, the worst thing that could have happened in records was to go in at halftime. They, if they could have kept playing for 40 minutes, there's no question they would have run away. They were just on fire. Regina Howard was 17, and Rutgers expands the lead back to four. Lloyd. Thayer. What's the rebound? Ellen has to make those. They have to get those shots from Ellen Bayer if she's going to be effective in here while Clarissa is on the bench. Howard scores. Rutgers perhaps maybe getting its second win here. I think with Clarissa Davis sitting on the bench, it gives them an opportunity to go into their post players. They cannot deny the way they were at the beginning of the second half. McBride puts it in. Melissa with her second field goal for four points, 61 to 57. The first of eight teams this weekend that will be qualifying for the, their respective Final Fours being decided here in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Howard. Wicks keeps it alive. Nine seconds on the shot clock, and Kristen Foley stole it. That was a big basket for Rutgers because Texas really put all out on defense in that series, and they were still able to score on it. Wimbish and Wicks knocks it out of bounds. 
Texas is not moving for the basketball. They're standing still. Rutgers is moving their feet on offense and on defense. You really have to give credit to these starting five for Rutgers. They are incredible in their stamina to be able to keep up the pace and the intensity of this game. McBride, air ball, Lloyd inside. And a foul. Now I thought that there was a foul when they both went up for the rebound, but on that shot, I don't, I didn't see the foul from Sue Wicks. Watch the shot by Lisa McBride. There, there was the foul, but on the shot, I don't know if Sue really caught her. I, I don't have a clear angle, obviously, but it looked like the foul came on the rebound. Sue Wicks picking up her third foul, and Andrea Lloyd completes the three-point play. She's got 14. 63-60. Rutgers leading 7.50 to play in the game. Wicks. Rebound, touched last by Texas. So Rutgers maintains possession. Marissa Davis continues to rest on the Texas bench with four fouls. Bev Williams also with four. Kristen Foley open. And she shows why. Foley's in her last two shots for 10 points. 65-60. Rutgers. Texas has got to start making their move. McBride, who's given Jody Conrad a big lift off the bench with six. Side, which missing here's Howard and a foul is called on Texas. Just to keep you abreast of the differences in women's college basketball, a 30 second shot clock, and despite the fact you see the three point line painted on the floor here at Fayetteville, there is no three point shot in the NCAA women's tournament. A few leagues experimented with the three pointer, it will be a part of the women's game next year. Keep those in mind. If Particularly if you're a Texas fan and you're looking to, for something to bail you out here in Fayetteville today. Regina Howard at the line. You know, what's funny about Regina Howard, Bob, is that I remember her doing the game last year with against Western Kentucky. And one of her comments to me is when she first arrived at Texas, or at Texas, at Rutgers, rather, she didn't feel she could play with the rest of the team, and here she is, a senior, one of the premier post players in the country. Goes over for two at the line. Rutgers has missed four straight foul shots. The lead is three. Lloyd, contact, no whistle. McBride scores again. Lesser had a pretty good game against St. Joe's in the opening round with eight points and a couple of steals in 17 minutes but there's nothing like performing under the microscope of a regional championship 65 64. performing as a freshman knowing that the team needs those shots she does not even hesitate on that shot which is a good good sign wicks over to austin t hooks it up and off bear fights for it wicks has it sue faking firing at a foul on bear Here, here are the teams scrapping for the rebound. Sue Wick strong on that. Ellen Bear is out of position and goes flying at her. She leaves her feet. She cannot do that. They can't afford to let Rutgers get the rebound to begin with. They've got to crash the boards as they were at the beginning of this half. Sue Wicks puts in her 20th point. Two for two at the line. 21. And Rutgers leading 67-64. 6-17 remaining in the game. The winner next Friday night in the Final Four at the Frank Irwin Special Events Center in Austin, Texas. Lloyd on a baseline drive. Step down the end line. And Rutgers takes over. As we mentioned, stay with us today here on ESPN. Beginning at 6 Eastern time, there's a steal. Williams. It's a one-point game. 
the other three region finals to be contested. We'll have all the action here, right here on ESPN. And then next week, the final four from Austin. A one-point game here at 540 left. Austin. Austin saves it. Up top to Malou. And a steal by Ben Williams. Texas can take the lead with a bucket here. Got it. Foul on Malou. Teresa Grant needs a timeout here. She has lost the momentum. She's got to stop this right now and get her team settled down. Look at the emotion here. You think they're relieved, Bob? Timeout, Rutgers. The pressure is finally starting to take effect here. Beverly Williams goes all the way for the layup and the lead. First time for Texas. 5.30 remaining. The Lady Longhorns have the lead. And welcome our next contestant from Cincinnati, Ohio, Mary Haney. Yes, you, Mary. This is your chance to enjoy a more colorful life by subscribing to TV Guide. Now let's show Mary what you'll get with TV Guide. To start, you'll receive complete listings for network, local, cable, and pay TV. You'll also get special features, movie reviews, a sports calendar, inside stories, and more. Okay, Mary, are you ready to go for it? Home audience, you two, join Mary, get TV Guide. Johnny? Call toll-free, 1-800. 932-1200 to get 30 weeks of TV Guide in your mailbox. 1-800-932-1200. Pay in three easy installments of just $5.75. Send no money. You'll be billed later. Call now. 1-800-932-1200. Congratulations, Mary. The subscription to TV Guide is yours. Bob Rathbun, Mimi Griffin in Fayetteville, North Carolina. 5.30 remaining in the game. And Texas leading for the first time since 6 to 4. And going to the free throw line, Bev Williams. And a key point, Bob, is that they captured that lead with Clarissa Davis sitting on the bench. Indeed. Beverly's 0 for 2 at the line this afternoon. Puts that one in, and Texas leads by 2. I think that lead now is really going to spark them, and I think the pressure is going to take effect in more and more turnovers by the perimeter, Rutgers perimeter people. Here's Foley. Turnover. Texas has This is trouble for Rutgers. Big key here for Rutgers is to maintain their enthusiasm as much as their intensity. And here's Wicks picking off the pass. Janet Malou plays to T. Austin. Foley inside to Howard. Blocked by Bear. Picked out of there by Susan Anderson. Texas leading by two. 69-67. Rutgers in their 2-3 zone once again. Bayer puts it in. But not playing it nearly as aggressively as they did in the first half. Jody Conrad's got that big lineup with 6-8 Bayer, 6-3 Anderson. And Andrea Lloyd in that front line. There's block, block shot. Up the floor to Bev Williams. Texas on a 11 to nothing run. They might need another timeout. Malou driving through, puts it up and off. Bear fights for the rebound. A hell ball possession, Texas. If you let Texas get the momentum, it's awfully hard to get it back from them. And only four minutes remaining. In fact, 3.56. McBride. Rebound to Howard. Rutgers trying to break a streak of 11 consecutive Texas points. The Lady Longhorns lead it by six and 3.30 remaining. Clarissa Davis is waiting to come back in the game. Howard, baseline, move. No whistle, out of bounds, Rutgers. And there is Clarissa.
Harrison Davis. The standout sophomore from San Antonio back in the game. Anderson goes out. There's the bench scoring. And that's what we talked about with the lack of depth on Rutgers' part. Lisa McBride, the freshman, has eight of those points. Wicks moves around Bear, puts it in. That is definitely a mismatch there. Ellen Bear cannot stay with Sue Wicks, so there's going to have to be a lot of helping defense for that matchup to work. Williams. 19 for Bev. Texas again by six. Well, you get the feeling, Bob, that this Texas team all of a sudden just caught their breath and now the weight of the world's off their shoulders once they went ahead. They're not used to playing behind. The long shadow of Ellen Bear. Now which misses and a foul call. You know, with that matchup, they're going to go to Sue Wicks all night. They go to Sue Wicks anyway, but with Ellen Bear on her, she definitely has an advantage. Anderson back in and McBride out for Texas. 2.41 to play in the game. Rutgers, which at one point in the first half, led by 10. They were up six at the half, now trailing six, and Sue Wicks to the line. The great thing that Sue's doing right now, she got a couple of her shots rejected early on. She knows she can drive around Ellen Bear, and that's exactly what she's trying to do. Sue has had a great game, maybe 24 points and 14 rebounds. Well, we mentioned at the top of this game that she'd have to have an exceptional game for Rutgers to win by. Loose, held ball, possession, Rutgers. 2.39 to play. 75-70. Rutgers is trailing. And here's McBride coming right back into the ball game, and Ellen Bear goes out. She's getting a great standing ovation from her Texas fans behind the bench. Chris Fulton. Austin inside. Here is the jump shot by Lunder. Howard puts it in. Regina Howard getting an offensive rebound for Rutgers. And the Lady Knights cut it to three. Lloyd. You can't leave Andrea Lloyd open anywhere on the floor. She is as good outside with her shot as she is in. Pressure by Texas. Austin works it up. 77-72. Lady Longhorn. Wicks. Tipped away by Lloyd. Williams going for the steal. Rolls out of bounds. Rutgers ball. Bob fatigue is taking effect right now. Regina Howard did not move to meet that pass. She had it easily had she moved her feet, but she didn't. A minute 46 to play. It really is awfully hard to expect five players to be able to go through the intensity and the pace of a game like this and to keep their stamina. Howard missing. McBride the rebound. Rutgers in their 2-3, but again, not nearly as aggressive as it was the first half. Unfold. Now that's a frustration foul right there, and all of a sudden the calls are going Texas's way on, on little steals like that. A minute 18 to play. Texas. 78 seconds. Separating them and a trip home to play a Final Four national semifinal game on their home floor. And Andrea Lloyd, who scored 16 today and is 4 of 6 at the foul line. Another point on Andy, a 4.0 in the classroom last semester. The entire Texas program has been excellent academically. They have had a 100% graduation rate of any player who's completed their four years eligibility there. And I might add that Rutgers has had the same 100% graduation rate. Lloyd's got 18. The biggest lead for Texas, 79-72. A minute 15 left. They're also making their foul shots now, Bob, which is something they didn't do the first half. Oh, what a 
baseline travel. hole, but travel. A minute eight left. Ellen Bear is doing a great job keeping her ground, but Sue Wicks took one too many steps. She knows she's got a score and she's going to force it. Ellen Bear, as a freshman, did a great job protecting that baseline. Texas obviously wants to use up some of the clock here. Andy Lloyd right through, banks it in. Team score 20, Texas oh. leading by nine, and they're going to Austin. Andy Lloyd is a senior, Bob. Seniors do not like to lose. She is the only senior on this Texas team. This is not going to be her last game if she can help it. Chris Foley will be going to the line. And a Rutgers bench that was full of enthusiasm and now the Grim Reaper beckons with 40 seconds left. Foley with 11. Just not that much time left for Rutgers. Texas enjoying things here in Fayetteville. They lead by eight. You have to credit both these teams, Bob. You can't you can't ask for a better game than what we've had in this regional. Foley final. intentionally missing the free throw to get two, and Austin misses. Rebound, Howard scores. Rutgers will not call timeout. The clock continues to run. Here's a foul, and they'll put Davis on the line, and a foul on Foley. Shades of Dallas Cabbages in the NCAA men's tournament last weekend against St. John's. An intentional miss by Foley, and Rutgers gets the two points to cut it back to six. This game is not out of reach for Rutgers by any means. They, Texas team has got to make their foul shots down the stretch here. They didn't do that. They had trouble with that the first half. They have to make it now to keep this game in their back pocket. Larissa Davis with a one and one. 24 seconds to play. Larissa Davis, he won the foul as far as Rutgers is concerned. She now will try the bonus shot. Team for Clarissa, 83-75. Texas by eight. You see the time remaining. Foley. Jones pushed by Austin before the shot. Very smart move there. Rutgers was trying to call a timeout when that, that ball went in the basket on their end, but Texas grabbed it and threw it inbounds before Rutgers was able to do that. 12 seconds remaining. The Lady Longhorns made their first Final Four last year in the NCAA, and they won it. And looking to go back and play it in front of the home folks. C.J. Jones will be at the line. 69% foul shooter. Texas leading 84-77. Points for Jones. Steal. Texas running out the clock. Williams now intercepted by Lunder. Three seconds. Two. Williams with a steal. Texas wins.
Texas in an emotionally draining basketball game. They've won the East Region Championship, and for the second consecutive year, it's to the Final Four. Now there's a picture worth a thousand words. Jody's hugging her only senior. You have to credit this Rutgers team, though. I can't say enough about the heart of this team to come in with the five players that they did to stick out this game, to lead the way they did, to play as intensely as, as well as they did. They did a tremendous, tremendous job. Sue Wicks, who contributed 24. But Andy Lloyd, who scored 20 in a row, and carried this Texas team down the stretch when Clarissa Davis was on the bench with four fouls and the Texas Longhorns, the East Regional Champions. Number one in the country, and now 31 